All right, we cross live to Oka, the Anambra State Capital, where Governor Charles Saludo is reeling out his second year report card while also holding a Thanksgiving service of his administration. Do stay tuned. seated. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, both now and forever. We are welcome to International Convention Center, Oka. On this great occasion, we are celebrating our governor, for the past two years of service to this state. I want to welcome everybody. First, I appreciate the presence of my brother, Bishop Jonas Benson of Newe, who will be leading us in this Eucharistic celebration. I also welcome Absentia, Archbishop Valerian Okeke of Onicha, every represented by Monsignor Dukwe, Cardinal Okpaleke of Ekulobia, represented by ABC Chiebo Kafada. We also welcome the Anglican bishops here and archbishops, all the clergy of the various denominations. I welcome the governor himself who we are celebrating today. In our midst, he's already here and his wife. Dr. Mrs. Nonye Soludo, also His Excellency, Deputy Governor of Anambra State, Dr. Nyeke Bezim and his wife, the National Chairman of APGA, Barrister Sly, Ezokenwa, Speaker, House of Assembly, Honorable Tochuku Udeze, the Chief of Staff to the Governor, Mr. Ernest. Is our dream. I think also the Chief Judge of Anambra State. Uh, you're also welcome to this celebration, Justice Honor Chie Anya Chebelo. Honorable Commissioners, Ndigwe from various communities, we are all here. Members of the Anambra State House of Assembly, members of Anambra State Executive Council, traditional rulers, captains of industries, and all. 
It is our prayer that this celebration we are doing today, which we are starting with the Holy Mass, we all pray for our governor, his deputy, and all those who are piloting the affairs of this state. That God will continue to bless them for a better and bright state. Because our people say, the government is doing well, the people will rejoice. So all welcome and we pray that we all have our minds and heart in this revelation through Christ our Lord. May we now stand. I like to thank the Bishop of Oka Diocese. He said that I'm his brother. If I must be his brother, then I'm his junior brother. He is my principal, and he taught me the work of how to be a bishop. My Lord Bishop, thank you for this honor of allowing me to be the chief celebrant in this Holy Mass. I deeply appreciate it. My dear brothers, today is the fifth Sunday ye be in the Lenten season. As the bishop already prayed, we we'll ask God to give our governor the wisdom of the old people, Solomon. And today, providentially, 17th of March is supposed to be the feast of St. Patrick. He's also the patroness of, patron of Nigeria. We we'll continue to pray that the spirit of St. Patrick may be also be infused in you so that this good work you have started may be brought to true completion. We can now place our other intentions for this holy mass. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to hear the contract of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. My Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your son handed himself over to death. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. For this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel, after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will be their God, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor, and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Response, Sam. Our response shall be 
Create a pure heart for me, O God. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Respond.
Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was his son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became a source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. John chapter 12, verse 20 to 33. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for these peoples that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and we glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said to each other, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice will not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. 
Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The gospel of the Lord. May we please remain standing. Be seated, please. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. A few words of reflection in the spirit of what we are celebrating today. First, the fifth Sunday in Lent 2024. And two years of stewardship of our governor, Professor Chukuma Saludo and his team. And so, as you already know, we are celebrating the fifth Sunday of Lent. And we know very much that Lenten period is meant to help us to have a change of heart, to reconcile with God and our neighbor. Forty good days has been set out for this. And we're almost coming to the close because at the end will be Easter, the resurrection of the Lord, which is the basis of our faith. Because as St. Paul tells us in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 14, he says, If Christ has not risen from the dead, our faith will be in vain. In fact, we should be pitied. Because it is his resurrection that everything for Christians is based. And therefore, we must prepare well as to be beneficiaries of this great, great work of Christ in our salvation. And therefore, we have already gone almost more than half. In short, we have only two weeks more. By this time, next two Sundays, it will be Easter Sunday. And therefore, we are appealing to ourselves if we had not prepared enough, this is opportunity to get ourselves to reconcile. You can hear the responsorial sound, which made it clear, calling on us, the Lord to create a new heart within us. We need a new heart as human beings, as members of the society, as believers in Christ. So we need this. At the same time, we have also gathered here to give thanks again to the Lord for the, his blessings as our governor and his team marks two years in office. The book of Proverbs tells us thus. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. They groan. Those of us who have been watching for a week and nine, we see people rejoicing various communities, what has been done among them. That is what we are looking for and what we want. Our hardworking and committed governor has taught it wise to give thanks to God. It's good to give thanks to God. And it is very proper. The story of the ten lepers who were killed in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, 11 to 18, shows that even God himself wants us to say thank you. Christ cured ten lepers. Nine saw himself okay and they left. Only one of them thought it wise to come and say thank you. And that made a big impression because even Christ himself, to show us that even God, 
wants us to, to, to appreciate his good things, how much more human beings like us? Because even their Christ mentioned directly and said, I thought it was 10 people that were healed. Where are the rest? Nine others. Only this one came to say thank you. So we thank the governor for thinking this way. To so thank God. And above all, if we understand very well that there is nothing in this life we are doing that depends very much on our effort. It is only when God has blessed our effort that we now say we have made it. Because the psalmist tells us in Psalm 127, 1, that unless the Lord builds the city, in vain the workmen walk. And unless the Lord watches the city, in vain the watchmen keep it. I think this this sense of appreciation, this sense of knowing that God is in control has propelled our governor and his team to say thank you for the two years. We know our governor applied for this job. He always says it. I applied for this job to be the governor of Anambra State. And we said, okay, go on. By the elections that we had done, and eventually he was sworn in on the 17th of May, 2023. So you applied for it, you have to do it, you have no option. And you must deliver. If you don't deliver, you will have yourself to blame. Only that we pray that people cooperate with you. So he's working, doing what he has wanted to do. And we thank God for that. We remember that our governor took off immediately after his, the day he was sworn in. The same day he went for work. And he went to those areas that are very, very touchy in our development. Areas like Obuka and the rest of them. He didn't, that day we had no party. We were waiting for a party and he denied us that. But we think that it is a sense of the best things to be done. And I, we know he and his deputy and all there has shown enough enthusiasm, love, dedication, and commitment to help our people. Any honest observer who wants to tell himself or herself the truth we, from all indications, say that our governor has tried and his team has tried for our people. They have tried. And we thank them. <laughs> things have been done in the past. Things are being done now. But our people say, what we are seeing today is encouraging and I think... Um, he has really taken good care of the common good of the people. Because governance is nothing but to take, good, uh, take care of the common good of the people in many ways. I could see, as I said, when I was watching the clips about the commissioner of the various, you see how people, even women brought their rapper, just like it was done in the time of Christ. Because they believe this is our savior and he's saving them. So we thank God for that. I want to say also, governor has achieved so much, but think of road infrastructure. Think of this, high quality roads. High quality. Roads with a stone base. And you know, when a road is very well done, if you are running through it, you will know it. It's just like if somebody had pounded the fufu very well. As one of me, know he has a car, he has a you know of me, if you have a name, you know so if you apply these roads, we see that they have been done so well and they will last. And that is what we so that one done will be done well. Because what uh, is very, very wasteful is to repeat and repeat and repeat. So we thank the roads, I don't need to mention them. Uh, the, the, because there are so many of them. Is it Aman C or both family areas? People have never is it Aman C Ufuma? Is it Denzan? Is it Obaro? There are so many of them. And I know the commissioning will come in earnest. The Portacourt, uh, Niger Street Road, and the Abdaukbu, Okuneze, Oka Water Scheme, and so on and so forth. If you want to see some of these things, they are in the public domain. You go and read them. We have only two hours for this mass, and we must scale everything through. So that is clear. So I want to thank him that within two years, information reaching us that governor has flagged off 400 and something kilometers of road and has done 200 and day. And that is a, a good indication. For four years and he has done 200 and in two years, what does it mean? It will be completed. 
It will not be only earmarked. Earmarked. What we are talking now is what? I mark. I am seeing it. I have seen it myself. And I thank God for that. So we need to thank him and thank his team for the good work. And uh, one thing interesting about this is that from all indications, our governor has not borrowed a dime. Not one cobble. As you know, even with the approval of the House of Assembly to borrow 100 million, billion, he had not borrowed. And work is going on. And so you can see what it means. So I thank him because we don't want, you see what borrowing is doing to Nigeria today. You see what he's doing to Nigeria because when you borrow and borrow and borrow, what is clear is that our country can be so we don't want borrowing because when you borrow and what you said even if you must borrow it must be used for something that can bring back the money and develop the people not borrowing for consumption because most of the borrowings in Nigeria are borrowed for consumption and people will just scale and go through so we thank God they are not doing that you will think of recruitment of teachers health workers, digitalization of schools and hospitals, youth empowerment, one youth, two skills. Agricultural revolution. Think of them. This issue of palm tree and coconut. You know, this is going back to our tradition. Because in the time past, people would live very much from what they collect from their immediate farms. Families wait for the fourth day, that is a nine as and they collect what they have, collect the pan nuts, collect the coconut, collect everything, and go to market, do business, and come back and live their life. And if all families have gotten that, I think we are heading somewhere we are very good. Also in the area of security, we can agree with me that initially it was tug of war. It was hell. Because the state students have been kind of taken over. But our governor did not relent. He held the bull by there. Because if you run away from somebody, it will be gathering. You face it, there will be problems. And if you can see me, and you know, security in Nigeria is not in Anambra State alone. Because when it, even what we have here is not serious with what we are seeing now. How do you explain over 200 and something? Students and poopy were taken. Sokoto, Kaduna, and the rest of them. You know what it means. 200 and something is almost this crowd here. One quarter of this side of the hall. And they were taken. Nobody can say where they are. Even my own stand is that the federal government and the team must work in order to tell us the truth. Because all these things seem to me, that is just a kind of gang up. We know when we are asked to bring an in and sing and all the what not to trace events, why are these people not traceable? I think somebody is fooling somebody somewhere. I think that way. And I want to call on the federal government to find a way of getting these people who are harassing us. So the few down here, I call them few. You are the strike there and get one or two depending. Government is making an effort. You know, criminals, when they strike, what, it, they, it will look like they, they're everywhere. They are not. It may be the same group they do here. You remember the days of armed robbery. They rob at Newe, you push them, they move to Umunze. The next month, they move to Oka, and people will think that they will be with us. They are not. It's only that crimes stand out. So all we think to say, I thank God the few, yeah, uh, you know, incursions into their dens. I think when they are dislodged very they, and we also appeal to those our brothers and the sisters because women are also involved now. I appeal to them. There is no life in, for human beings to live in the bush. In the fall, you can never make life out of that. Let them come out. Sometimes they were called, let them come out so they can be re rehabilitated and they move for a better tomorrow in our society. We continue to pray for uh, them, praying God to grant them their heart to know that the, the route they are taking can lead them nowhere. 
as in Obu Ebe ne Shin Ebe Megini, and I, you don't make any like that. So, on the other hand, uh, we have a few observations and requests to make on a day like this. It's good to do that. One, electricity supply in our state it remains a big problem. We are called the light of the nation, unfortunately, without light. The light of the nation, unfortunately, without what? Those who are handling that matter should do something. I know it is almost national. I know it's almost national. But I think we can help ourselves. And here, I think of Abia State. They are now reference point. I know it started so many years uh, ago under Professor Naji and matured, but Naji assured us that if things are done well, that project will come in line within three years. So I, I challenge you because uh, you know how our people are, we have so many industrialists, people who want to work. Look at it, how they are doing there. So, Mr. Governor and his team, think of uh, our own geometric power. We need it. There is no possibility of uh, Dubai, Taiwan, without what? Another request and observation. We remain grateful to God for the, the governor and the government for trying to clear up illegal structures here in the various towns and cities. The shanty is all over. We should, we know many a time those who, has, who seem to be involved are the poor ones, but poverty should not make us not to know what is good. Poverty does not mean you go and trade on the main road. You don't do that. Order is nature's first call. It's not health because they cry, they are poor, they are this and that, and people sympathize. Yes. But that does not make you not to realize the right and how to do it. So those who are keep making our environment so nasty, because when you have a nice environment, it also helps in your life. You breathe good air, what you see affects you. So that policy and that act, I remain very grateful for the government. Because once, if you see certain areas open, you will see life immediately. You see life. And you will look like human beings are here, not AC, not pigs. We are human beings, not pigs. But I appeal to government again on the other side. You know, when you hit a child the other way, you try to use the other hand to make it cool down the so I think of either small markets or miniature markets, whatever you call it, in regulated areas where people can do, those who can do little businesses. And the businesses must be somehow, say here is for only vegetable market and fruit. This is for this, so that people go there and do some. But my brothers and sisters, there is no wisdom to trade on the road. There is no wisdom to make life, everything nasty because you want to live. You will live. So we plead on that and we are very hopeful that uh, the government will listen. I thank also in particular, I have to say it here because we watch and see what happened. Uh, the chairman of uh, ACDA, uh, that young man, that young man is a square peg in a square because he faces it. Tells you the truth and pursues it. It is not like the thing because uh, his own is not like our people who, when they are involved, they start to paint things. We were told a story about one man. I will say it in Igbo. Maybe I translate if the those. Na no fool, but the Hana say ke. Oh no, Maka je buwe ke ta. We are born to nature, but the ke me here me here. When you see nature, but where now, now, me man a judge. I hope the judge there here. Me man a judge now, and now I got a statement. Yeah, well now, but then judgment. You know, boy, I will do. Man, you hear me again? Me man answer. Unless so, of which I just leave you. You go and buzz now. 
So I want to show you the name. And then I So phone. Now, now, I'm going to show you the name. So phone. I'm going to show you the name. So phone. I'm going to show you the name. So phone. The man started to retrace his steps and ended up saying, He has a ketametre, I am a guinea. Yes, over here. So, this is our people. Many a time, when they are involved, they will bend things. But this young man, well, I don't need to, I'm not campaigning for him, but I'm saying a naked truth. Is there somebody who is, I'm moving this way, the people are coming over, it was this way, and he will do it. Our people are too fond of. Each union calls a million calls of the other world. Another issue I want us to look at is this issue of building collapse. And it becomes more painful when it involves the government structure. And so I want to appeal, I'm not an engineer, I'm not an architect, I'm not anything but uh, when you have done a structure well, I will know. Of course, I'm not a suibo. Man, I saw and him when I am a guinea. Yeah, I know, yeah. So I want the government to, in that aspect, watch it because it doesn't give a um, good image to the state. And therefore, we are appealing in that regard that more consultants be used alongside with those in the ministry. Because somebody who is in the ministry is, is there before and will be after. He doesn't care so much. But a consultant, we know the effects of what is happening and eventually it will touch his name. It's not a good thing, and therefore we must do our best. Another issue is serious hunger in the land. Agodio. Agodio. The works that we are doing very fine. It's only the living can. So I also want to, to because I know during Christmas, all of us got a bag of rice. I got myself. And I'm still eating my own bag. And so many people, workers, and I also had that um, as a kind of palliative. I also had that um, a little money was top to the civil servants. And some money was top to the, uh, uh, their salary. That thing has not ended, though. Isn't even getting worse and worse. And therefore, I played with you in spite of the lean resources, if that could be done, at least for the workers, because if you add something, they will go into the market, buy the money we do what? Get to people we then work. So that's my own observation there. And I will be very happy if that is taken good care of. Uh, what I have here, you know, do you know what it is? You can't read it from there, but let me read it for you. Anambra State of Nigeria, 2019 number. A N H A Law 2019 number four. A law for control of funeral ceremony activities in Anambra State. As in Antia days week again, he on at again. And the worst thing that can happen to you is to go one step forward and ten steps backwards. And I want to say about this law, which is in my, close to the heart of the church. One, this law is meant for the good of the people, especially the poor and the needy. Because our people are such that even in their poverty, they want to do what the other person is doing. Nowadays, when people die, people are lamenting. You think they are lamenting because of somebody dying. The problem is how to do the what? The funeral. Akwaba <laughs> So I talk of this because why I'm saying this is that the church initiated this move 
and the government took over. I still remember people like uh, Charles Ezan, member of the house in those days, around 2014 15. And Kingsley Loba of Newi South. I was talking about these people are talking, and eventually the house, some people thought that this is one of our problems and it should be brought to the government. And the Anambra State government looked into that, what they brought in. It had first reading, second reading, third reading. We had also a public hearing. I was there, other bishops and other children, they were there. And on 9th May 2019, it was passed into law and signed. And it's helping. I thank you because I, um, when your father died, he showed us that even the governor can have a funeral one day. And not a, one week. Not one week. Because all those one week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they cooking and eating and drinking. Now for you. And when you quite a good lose, we good balance. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm just, I'm quite a good But it is not there. My own name, my kind of, I'm with you. I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. So, we thank God you may implement because this law, after making it under Governor Obiano, the same government went contrary to it. It came out in full swing at the funeral of Tony Mas. They violated everything. And it, it, whosoever you talk about, they will tell you uh, government has violated it, what you want us to do. And it was going that way. But I want to know, I want to say that this will help us and uh, as a church, we must obey this law. Because we must obey this church, this law. Because we are bound to obey a legitimate government when it gives a, a law. It's clear. The social teaching of the church makes it clear. We must obey a legitimate government. And the government of Willowbiano was legitimate. And the present government is also what? Legitimate. If somebody wants this not to hold, the best way is to go do what? You go back to the House of Assembly, put it forward again, and if they say, oh, it's gone, we go. But if not, and we should also know that the church is within the state. It's under the state, whether I like it or not. The state is not under the church. Because the state covers every human being in that area. However, what is clear is that the state can never make a law that is against faith and moral. And this document does not contain it. So we want to, because these things will help us to live a better, uh, to save cost and have befitting living. And there may be decent funeral. But what we have today is unbefitting living for some and befitting funeral. Maybe you maybe you can maybe you can Man, and aqua, no sino on ubinite, or ya mazibia. The nature of decoration and the rehabilitation and buildings there is not a green. And I am a me, KWS Naimel. I just, just to close this, of recent, I saw a clip where somebody went for a funeral with a cow. And eventually, before the next day, the woman came and killed the cow. When the ogre came back again to take his cow, because he hired the cow. He hired the cow. This is what we do. Do people not hire now and hire the, the cloth they give? As you are giving the cloth, the owner is down there to collect it back again. Why all these problems? 
Somebody gives you a cow, you give him a goat and a yam. Somebody gives you goat and yam, he gives you chicken and for what? Onye wetele higini koji, e wueme. Onye wetele okoko, gini, onye wetele zile, gini koji okoke, ma oka liri anu. Ma na oka afufu ne me gini. To multiply the problem. So we want to reduce the problem, and that is the essence of this law. So we plead with all of those who do not see it as proper. We must stand by the side of the poor. That is the church. Option for the poor, because it is the poor. And the, the civil society cannot, it, it, the, the church is the heart of the moral of the society. It is we who we tell them then they do the right thing. They have their police, they have their army. I do not have any. So I drop this at this point. And finally, because I'm coming to the end, as I must obey the, we must finish within two hours. The last one is our school system. Our school system. There is probably a more serious one. I have noticed, and it is the common practice now, that people go to school as early as 6 a.m. and come back about 6 to 7 p.m. every day. Even now, uh, Saturdays, and even during holidays. Why? Because parents do not want to see their children around. They are giving them trouble. Let them go, 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 go. Secondly, because teachers want extra money. They want to do lessons. What are you listening? I studied all the way, my primary, secondary, and whatever. I didn't go for any lesson, but I passed very well. Because if I did not pass very well, I would not be here. I would not be at this position. It's not possible to be a priest without... Because the demand is that anybody who will be a priest will get the needed qualification to enter the university in his own area. And you can see what... So, we want us to look at this thing seriously. Because what we have noticed now is that parents abdicate their responsibility. Nobody will train your child for you. Others will support you. Training of a child takes four areas. The parents first. You have to give the foundation. The church second, according to a religious denomination, because every church must, or group must be telling you the right thing. Then the school. And finally, the larger society. But when you get, you get your child and in the morning, tell me, your child who left in the morning, 6 o'clock, coming back 7 p.m., when can this child have contact and with the parents? Teach them basic things, the prayers, and the rest of them. And what is good and what is bad. The school cannot do it. So I want government to look at it. And now I have even noticed that we have now primary schools that are boarding in school. Primary school, that are boarding in school. Where did this child learn the family fundamentals? You want somebody to train your child for you? He, will he or she will train according to his own style, not your own style. So let us look at it. In our own time, we go to school in the morning, around 1 o'clock, 1.30 to the school we do what? We close. You go home, eat. You can now go and see what your parents, whatever, help. Then you can also go for catechism classes. For moral and so on, things like that. But now, nothing. We are training people only on one aspect. But whether we like it or not, man is made of, is made of body and soul. You must train two of them. If you train it only one-sided, there will be a problem. If our governor, who is a professor of economics, has no basic morality teaching of the church, I don't think he will be behaving the way he's doing it now. It's very clear. What we are doing now will lead us to getting intelligent people but clever criminals. Intelligent people but clever what? Because they have nothing to base. They have nothing. Oh, yahoo, yahoo, excellent. Everything, because it is the religion that will insulate you. As you are. So I plead with the government, and I, I put it to the government. I am, I have come again, I will be talking. I am strongly, 
suggesting that the government will soon look into our school system. Let us go back to the child will go to school in the morning, come back in the afternoon, and then do other things. Even you have saturation points. You have saturation. There is a point you reach, you can't move anymore. What I create now, you buy all the whole entertainment, car, men, nothing, and men are on a school. So, in the lesson, those lessons you, have, you think you should teach in the evening, teach them in the morning. They are there because if you have a program, if you have a program, you will know what it takes to do this course. Parents, be close to your children. Don't push them away. I had an occasion at Urum. I was just uh, delivering a homie like this, and I saw a woman, she was playing with the so daughter or son, uh, the, with the child. The child slaps the man, the woman, the woman slaps back. I know the slap of both of them can do no harm. Neither the child can slap the mother to <laughs> anything, making it to, that we have effect. No, the woman will slap her child to that level. But I told them that this child, if you don't train him or her very well, Time will come when he will slap thunder out of your eyes. <laughs> he will slap thunder out of your eyes because he has not been taught not to beat the elders and things like that. So, those I, I'm sure the, the, the speaker is here. You and your team and government, another homework. Let us see what to save tomorrow. We are talking of the and, uh, criminals. They are coming. More are coming if they are not giving birth because at least it's very necessary. So I thank everybody for this great day. The governor and his team, we thank them. I, we thank them for the good work they are doing. We always observe things and they can criticize. It's very necessary. But I plead with people, let our criticisms be constructive. You can criticize, you can observe, but let it be what? Constructive. Because when people say, so you begin to ask yourself, are they living here or not? And no, nobody says that the governor has done everything completely, but he has tried very well. And if you continue with that step, we will arrive. We shall have only one governor at a time. It is not, if it is not your turn today, you couldn't even grab it and uh, catch it. Wait for another time. That's the point. They will wait for another time and help them to move. But when you continue simple, so we pray that we continue to support him. Let all hands be on deck so as we continue to enjoy the dividends of democracy which is good governance, things moving. You know, when I saw the man there, I thought it was uh, governor of Abia. I, I thought it was Oti, but he's not Oti. But those who see Oti, let them tell him that I wave my hands for him. And I thank that woman who stood by all thunder and storm to say the truth. Otherwise, some criminals could have been there like it has been. And that state, you see what the state is enjoying. So that's why you say when good people are in office, people do what? Rejoice. So may we continue, may the Lord continue to bless our governor and his family, our deputy governor and the team, and all of us who have gathered here to say thanks to God with him and for him. May God bless our state, Anambra, Nigeria, so that at the end of it all, it will be all thanks and thanks through Christ our Lord. May we rise to profess our faith.
intercessory prayers. By dying to self, we are born to eternal life. And that's penance. Let us come to our Father in prayer. For the pastors of the church, that they may be strengthened in tirelessly proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in civil authority, that they may focus less on themselves and more on the promotion of the good of those they have been called to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For internally displaced persons, that they may receive the spiritual and material comfort they need to rebuild their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and the grace to be selfless, that the Lord who gave up his life for our sake may lead us to serve others without counting the cost. Let us pray to the Lord. For the dead, especially those in our hearts, in our community, and our family members, that they may find eternal rest with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. We beg our Mother Mary to continue to intercede for us, our dear state, our governor. Hail Mary. Lord of all creation, Hear the prayers we unite with the sacrifice which your son gave us as his new and eternal covenant. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May we be seated, please. This is time for offertory. The church orders have positioned themselves in strategic places in the church. So please, we request you to make use of the place that is closest to you. You, you are the love I receive. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with any man. Come on to God, and there is your name. Amen. You are the Lord, there is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with any man. Almighty God, and there is your name. Oh, you are the Lord, that is your name. You can never give your praises with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, and there is your name. Amen. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, and there is your name. Oh, 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and have instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith. Graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. And for as true man, he waits for Lazarus, his friend, and as the Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May you therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them that you do fall, so they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, of the new and eternal covenant, which you pour out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, the memorial of his death, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation. And that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. To remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul, St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Perisum et commisso et in hipso et sibido patri omnipotenti eonitate spiritu santi 
Omnisahana e gloria Per omnia secula seculorum At the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching we dare to say Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as a way the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to be with you. But only the world and my soul shall be. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is time for Holy Communion. The Holy Communion is for Catholics who are duly prepared in accordance with our culture and tradition that will come up. If you are not a Catholic and you are not duly prepared as expected, please remain seated in your seat and keep praying for our dear state, Anambra. Those at the second half of the church will come forward for the reception of the Holy Communion. Those at the second half of the church will come to the center. If you want to receive communion, please start coming out because priests that will distribute Holy Communion will be many.
O sacrament most holy. O sacrament most holy. O sacrament most holy. May we please stand. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Can I down one minute? I'd like to thank my principal, the most reverend uh, P.C. Ezokafo. Ni Hokuru, Maka Burial Law. As a Catholic priest, and now as a Catholic bishop, this is the best proposal that he has made in our state, in our dear church, to save our people. As the auxiliary bishop of Oka, I was living in a Kulobia then. A young man from Ibuku, from Our Lady of Fatima Parish then, under Father Christopher, late Father Christopher came to me and said, my Lord, please give me two months, give me more extension so that I can save the family land to help us prepare for the burial. Now, Mamuya, no, Mamuya, no, bro, okay. Now, Osu Wada, it was Wada, now, Galon, no. And only me here of my, no, no, I want to Um, why, no, no, I want to Where's the amber? You see, I'm a bishop. I could within the two months, a man left property, and I discussed with the parish priest. You see, whatever amount one year in a parish cancelled, not your funeral, and I'm a jack and we're from Wada, and I call those waffle, never any property. My Lord Bishop, thank you. Makana if Okuru, Maka proposal, Afulum, on your end, then when you came with us, no man, me, on a Yalaki Kuzurum, when you hear. I have told my priest, Nina with Isis. Amam, Nega, my problem, natural in him, but when we enter him, Menon, because Osia Gorike, my friend, does he want one ever? Okay, Menwe. Mana, because now when the Menwe. Because now you are not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to Sinya we plan ko na kata ko abati ozu ni em ife dem pa masa na acholum I have works al go mo no bodo you were in there is that in Canada is that in United Kingdom is that in US on the south of Italy o be ba na etufu etu ese me ife bishop an kuru melum nando celebrate people on na made won e de go mi chose we be an inenje no bodo you wo at most ye nwa coffee and you talk of him all on your own. <laughs> your Excellency, as the bishop said, the church and the police, the government must be able to help to regulate it. And on your zoo, and my brother priest who must take a lead in this. And we have a as priest, as Catholic priest, who must show the people an example. We must show the people example. So, Darlene, 
Yes, Your Excellency, and the government of Anambra State, you see Nike? Um, in always, but all within two years. So, on what if you could not get Kobe, you know? It's a why fix it if it is not broken. But I'm saying now to Anambrarians, why try to break it if he's trying to fix it? <laughs> Allow him to deliver. I don't know man or one, I don't know man anywhere. Glory to Jesus. After the final blessing, there will be procession. Only the priests and the bishops on the altar will join the procession. They will go into the sacristy from the altar. We request the priests. We request the priests to invest where they are and uh, retain their position. May we please stand. The Lord be with you. May the name of the Lord be blessed. Our help in the name of the Lord. And may the Almighty God bless and keep you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and continue to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the procession begins, we request everybody to continue to stand where you are. This is not time to exchange pleasantries because the second phase of the event will begin now. Let's introduce Ezebun an extraordinary Nigerian, the former Secretary of the Commonwealth. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Emeka Anyoku, GVCO. Put your hands together for him as he talks to us. Your Excellency, Professor Chukuma Saludo, and Her Excellency, Mrs. Saludo. The Deputy Governor of Anambra State, Your Royal Highnesses, 
the commission, honorable commissioners of Anambra State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, I should recognize the former governor, fondly called Mama Anambra, Dame Vaji Etiaba, and also Onwa, former governor of Anambra State, Dr. Chris Ngige, whom I saw a little while ago. I must say that I'm delighted to be here I'm delighted to be here for the celebration of uh, the first two years of Professor Chukuma Saludo as governor of Anambra State. I say it's a celebration because of the evidential achievements of the governor since he assumed office two years ago. I must confess that I'm not surprised at his performance, knowing as I do, Professor Chukuma Saludo and his antecedents before he, before he became governor. He came to office with three attributes that have proved to be his enablers. The first attribute is his sound, very sound intellectual capacity. And the second attribute is that Professor Chukuma Saludo is a man of the character of can do. And the third attribute is his quite uncommon combination of ability to live in the ivory tower combined with the ability to belong to the streets where the masses of our people live and work. I say it's an uncommon combination because we have experienced people who live in the ivory tower, wield powers from the ivory tower, and really do not show sufficient sensitivity for the ordinary man and woman in the street. This is not Chukuma Saludo. It is quite clear from what the bishop, the Lord Bishop said about his uh, performance, about the governor's performance, that the last two years has seen what I would describe as extraordinary achievements in some areas and the beginnings and acceleration in other areas of socioeconomic and infrastructural transformation of Anambra State. Whether it is in the security 
and law and order, or in human capital development and social agenda, or in recognizing and reordering governance and value system, or in a number of areas, as one can see. What is most impressive about the things that one can see, things that were mentioned by the Lord Bishop in his sermon, what is most impressive about Governor Saludo is that these things are not in the realm of hearsay, but there are various projects which are there for all to see in their commissioning or in their visible progress. And so I would like to conclude this, my brief remarks, first by congratulating Governor Chukuma Saludo on his excellent performance in the last two years. And to say, in the language of our people, Na governor, Jidekwokiji. And for those who do not understand the language, it means that when someone is performing well, you say to him or her, hold on to your performance. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Please, can you put your hands together for one of Anambra's finest. Now, at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, let's invite the rave of the moment, the game changer, the people's governor, the performer, the one who has brought light to Anambra State. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Charles Chukuma, Saludo CFR, Mr. Solution. Solution Abiago Nanambarao Wapu Gabun Kanyo Anyi Bialundosio Bodo Waka Muta Saludo Tali Wamba Wani Sovye Saludo Na Lolo Wana Bana Newe Wamba Wani Sovye Solution Abiago Nanambarao Where is the ming? Ah, what is that? Because what is that? Where is the presentation? Oh no, where is where is my laptop? I control it.
Um, trying to get this to, I mean, um, Your Excellency, Deputy Governor of Van Amra State, the Chief Judge Van Amra State, the Speaker Van Amra State, the First Lady of Van Amra State, my Lords, spiritual, on all sides, Ndigwe, Your Excellency, the former governors of Anambra State, I will not go in a strict order, if a protocol, oh, but not forgetting the national chairman of the only progressive party, um, the pioneer progressive party in Nigeria. Uh, then our own quintessential um, chief, Emeka Anyoko, GCON, former Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Captains of industries here, I can see quite a lot of them. I see Dozy, I see uh, Innocent, and, and so on and so forth. Um, the Reverend Fathers, Sisters, the Bishops, and all the Reverends here. Anambra Zuleizweba. The Anambra Kenemo no. Anambra Kweno. Mono. Zono. Um, today, it's for us, for me actually, it's just another day. We weren't quite sure if we are going to have a celebration to mark this second year anniversary. If it had fallen on an ordinary day, we would have let it pass. In fact, we thought we were just going to use the day of the second year anniversary to go on with the commissionings that have been going on. But then somebody reminded us about two weeks ago that it falls on a Sunday. Quite frankly, I would have just gone on to the St. Patrick's Cathedral to have a normal church service and go home. But we thought that the people who wanted to attend wouldn't be able to contend in the cathedral. And so we decided to carry the Thanksgiving a normal mass on Sundays to this place. And I want to thank all of you, thank all of you who have made out your time from all over Nigeria, the clergy, my Lord Bishops, the Reverend Fathers for officiating at this particular auspicious moment. Today is a day that we thought, and we've tried to make it as exclusive as possible, when they are Anambra, who are our employers. Two years ago, myself and my deputy, Dr. Nye Kajubi Bezim, took oath of office as your chief servants. We went to work, as the bishop rightly said. Right away there, we worked for about eight hours and 45 minutes on the first day. No form fair, nothing. The next day, we were in Oboko and began the journey. Today, we've come to report to you some aspects <coughs> of what we've been able 
to do, given the context of the time that we came into office and given the challenges of the time. But in spite of it all, I want to say to all of you, in summary, that the state of Anambra, as has been <coughs> attested to by the bishop, uh, bishops, and Chief Emeka Anyoko, the state of Anambra is strong. The state of Anambra is strong and is getting stronger and will be getting stronger as the years go by. Tomorrow we'll be back again in Oboko. We'll be back in Oboko to commission about 12 kilometers of road of the 15 kilometers already started. A pipe bomb water will be running in Oboko with the street lights and yes, for the first time in history, a general hospital will be opened in Oboko tomorrow. A few days ago, we were at Obo family. The communities along that axis that have since the creation of Adam and Eve never saw a tired road. And we saw the joy of the people. As we speak now, we are doing test runs of what we call Anambra Statewide Water Scheme. It's not just about Oka. It's being test run in Oka. It's being test run in Onesha. It's being test run in Okoko. It's being test run in Okozo. It's being test run in Adam. Uh, and Newi, and so on and so forth. Yes, we grew up with urban and rural water schemes with the dozens of the others. Yes, we'll be able to go from Amansi to Fuma in a few days' time to commission that. Yes, we were at Onisha the other day. As I speak to you, the Ochanja roundabout is no longer a refuse dump. There is now water fountain there to signal our urban renewal. Yes, we move around the state where we are commissioning this, this and that at Onisha. The crowd was there applauding us and telling us that because we've gotten touts largely out of the markets and out of the streets in Onisha, today, People now come back again from all over the country to shop in Onisha again, and they are having money back in their pocket. Yes, DKK, please. Uh, thank you very much. We haven't got the time. We just have to, I mean, I just want to say a few things uh, to all of us, just to tell you that you employed us this job under some circumstances which we won't elaborate upon. But today, like I said, money is getting in the pockets of people. That's the testimony of the KK drivers, the bus driver at Onisha, who carried his entire earnings, the only thing that he earned for the day, to give to me, please, in appreciation. That his mechanic, his the um, vehicles used to go for mechanic once every three days or so, but not anymore, and so on and so forth. And that the cost of maintenance now down, the cost of the affairs also, and that's the story we were told along the line. Those who are no longer paying school fees in schools, because we now have a truly free education in public schools, that's money back in the pockets of the people or those who are having free antenatal, free delivery in our public hospitals, that's money free in their pockets. All I want to say to you, dear friends, is that when we took over office, we told you that this is an agenda with a deadline. And being an agenda with a deadline, there are no excuses. No excuses whatsoever. Yes, we promised in the Anambra, that we will be laying the foundation for us to move on, to lay a foundation to have that, what we call African Dubai, Taiwan, Silicon Valley. Dubai as a hub for commercial and logistics. Taiwan as the economy that built on human capital resources 
to build a most powerful industrialized nation. And Silicon Valley, because our future lies in technology and innovation. That's the nexus of what we want to do, the Anambra of our vision. And we told you we want to build Anambra, lay the foundation for Anambra to become a smart mega city. But it has to be an international city to achieve our objective. It has to be that state where the citizens, if they choose to go anywhere else in the world, it will be by choice, but not under duress. To build a livable and prosperous homeland. And we are armed with two major documents as our compass. Our manifesto, the People's Manifesto, and the other one, Anambra Vision 2070. Armed with these two things, we began to work. But it is just like his Lordship said, you're not going to begin to uh, overnight, you'll have a Dubai, Taiwan, Silicon Valley, when you have criminals taking over eight local governments when we assumed office, and kidnapping and killings were daily occurrences. That's not on that condition you do that. You're not going to do that when you have filth and waste and so on, all over the streets and, and, and all over, where you have arboros take over the entire space of the land or where about 35% of our land space is being threatened by gully erosion, and so on and so forth, and, and then the state of public finance as it were. We needed to pull back to get down to the fundamental basics. And what I want to say to you today, what do we present to you? We're not going to go into the full details of it. My people try to put it together, and they came down with about maybe 100 and some, uh, 200 and something uh, items. I said, no, 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 go and cut it down to no more than 100 that we'll be able to share. You are going to get copies of them, but I'm going to now speak to just the nuggets of some of the highlights of what we have here. But I want to say to you, Ndia Nambra, as I said a moment ago, the state of Anambra is strong. Now, in terms of our journey so far, as is public knowledge, we have five major pillars. That's actually the pathway to the future. The pathway to today and that of the future. Where we are trying to lay the foundations for the next generations, we are also mindful of today, because the people must live today. But let me share something very important with you. And like we said, no excuses. The times are challenging. And it is very important that we take this message away. You all know the challenges that we have, you know, that have come upon us in terms of the national economy, the exchange rate, the subsidy removal, which were inevitable disruptions that had to happen because we were in denial for so long. But having come on now, what is evident in their number is that the resources available to government today, the resources available to government today, and it is important that we all take this point home, happen to be a tiny fraction of what was available in years past. In fact, I went down the memory lane and I went back from 2004 to 2024. In terms of the annual, both coming from Abuja and everything, spending on year-on-year on year basis. Each year came to some hundreds of millions of US dollars. Each year. In fact, it reached the peak of about $1.1 billion in 2013. Today, if you even go by the value, the purchasing power of money, Naira then, 
On monthly basis, Anambra was receiving between 34 so a million US dollars to 50 something, 60 in some cases, which if you do the conversion today, you'll be getting between 50 something to 70, 80 billion on monthly basis. Today, if the current trend continues, the current trend of what we've got in January, February, or even later last year continues, we might actually end up, at the end of the year, receiving less than $100 million, which will be, at the peak period, less than 10% of what Anambra got at the peak period, and at best times, maybe 20, 25, or even less percent in terms of the resources. When cement was costing a few hundred naira, and today you pay over 12,000 to do the same thing. When diesel was about a, less than 100, now you pay 1,006, 1,007. But you still have to fuel the same vehicles and so on and so forth. We are intentional, very deliberate, about doing more with less because we are facing an extraordinarily difficult circumstance in Nigeria. But you know what? Tough times demand for tough managers and tough leaders. That's why we came, that's why you employed me, and that's why we decided to lay a template to say before we even go on, it is very attractive. Every governor that comes, you know, banks flood you with offers of for borrowing and so on and so forth. But we decided for the first two years to demonstrate something, capacity to do more with less. And so far, as has been said, for two years, despite receiving about 25% in real terms or in dollar terms of what was in the past, we've chosen deliberately not to borrow. And people ask me, I know his, my, my lordship, uh, Bishop Ezo Kabo, has asked me this question more than four times. How do you do it without borrowing and with the difficult circumstances? And my answer is that we are doing so because we are executing the most austere government ever. As I speak to you, I have not, I'm not being, I'm not, I'm not taking any salary, I'm not paid any salary by Anambra State Government. Even the first lady of Anambra doesn't have any official car. She still drives my personal vehicles. We are executing the most austere government ever and directing resources, cutting waste, cutting the cut of governance to bare bones and directing resources, prioritizing them to what is the most important for the people. And so what you will see us delivering is that we are determined, at least if I don't, can do anything else, having been governor of the central bank and not just another governor who managed the resources of this country with annual budget of the central bank over $2 billion. Now I have to manage the one of Anambra with less than 200 million, a fraction of what was there in the past. We needed to demonstrate that it is possible. It is possible to give people basic value albeit that from this year we will be changing gear. And when we change gear, Anambra, you aren't seeing nothing yet. Yes, why I'm still talking about this point is important to, for me to highlight because I think uh, his, uh, your lordship, you did mention something which is part of the reason why we came. We are of the All Progressive Grand Alliance. Our motto is leave no one behind. If you see the way we have prioritized governance, we have given priority to all those neglected, those who are left behind. That's why we are prioritizing free education, free antenatal, free delivery services, including cesarean for pregnant women. That's why we are prioritizing those areas that have never seen anything. The places that have never seen hospitals, we are building five general hospitals in areas that have never seen that before. Yes, we care for the downtrodden. When we say that these poor people, peasants, petty traders, and vulcanizers and hawkers should not be taxed anything, that's because of who we are. But guess what? 
there is a binding resource constraint. If you were to take the entire revenue of the state, what comes from Abuja, what we generate internally, and put them all together, and just put them, put them in this hall, and line up all the citizens of Anambra, and share it to them. My lords, Ndebai, each person, each person's share will come to about 2,800 and something naira a month. 2,000 naira, 800 and something naira a month. It is from that 2,800 and something per person per month that we got to pay salaries, that you have to build roads, that you have to provide water, that you have to employ teachers, that you have to do this, that you have to do that, and pay pensioners, and pay all of those, all from the 2,800 and something naira per person per month. This is what it comes down to. You can decide to bring it all and share to everybody. And so we shut down everybody. No road, no water, nothing else. And give each person 2,800. And what would that do for the person for the month? It is important that we get this context. That today, because of what we are doing and giving people value all over the state, property prices have shot up. They were telling me in Onisha that there are now places that it costs about a billion to buy a plot of land here in our nation. People along uh, Oka North, where property prices used to be maybe one million or there about a plot is now 15 million or there about. People are getting richer. Okada drivers are having money in their pocket and so on and so forth. That's how you manage the little resource you have. Otherwise, you bring it and share out and everybody goes home. And yet everybody will be hungry. But all we say to you, Ndebai, Bona, with where we have been so far, we assure you of one thing, that every cobble, every cobble of Anambra's resource entrusted in our hands will be able to show you where it is going. We will show you where it is. And if we, are, if we ever borrow, if we borrow, and you do borrow when you have genuine reason. No business grows without borrowing. But not the kind of borrowing that I was the norm. We prioritize this. We spend the first, this first two years developing feasibility studies, project financing uh, capabilities, and so on. And when we borrow, we will show you the projects that they go into and how those projects will pay back the money itself. We want to, it is not by accident that Anambra has now been adjudged among the top five states on fiscal sustainability in Nigeria. This has happened over the last two years. So, now that we have a handle on it, we'll now move to the next steps. Now, I take you through just a few, just to give you some highlights. On security law and order, this has already been pointed out where we are. You knew where we were before we came in. And um, sustained response, at least, most of these eight local governments have been recovered. And uh, my name and um, uh, even after fighting all of those, you never, because it's a lucrative criminality, these guys have gone into the bush and they have seen the benefits of kidnapping for ransom. So occasionally, you will still have these pockets of stuff ongoing, but we are determined to read our number of criminals and criminalities. The Truth and Justice Commission, we set up the Truth and Justice Commission to get to the remote and immediate causes of our insecurity in the Southeast and Anambra, led by Professor uh, Chido Dinkalo. They have just submitted a very seminal report, and I will tell you that is historic. And we are going to even discuss with our brothers in the rest of the Southeast for us to get into the reports, various volumes, because they get to the, heat, to the heart of where we are and what we need to be doing going forward. But it's a long-term journey. We established, uh, of course, restructured our vigilante service. We established the anti-touting, the SASA, uh, which is now the fear of SASA in Indonesia is the beginning of wisdom for our thoughts, and so on and so forth. Uh, digital transformation in the justice uh, sector, 
uh, solar powered courts, you know, small claims court, Bureau of Missing Persons, some executive bills that have been passed by our um, um, very hardworking, uh, I mean, uh, House of Assembly. I must commend at this point the Speaker and members of the State House of Assembly for being so patriotic and committed to the progress of Anambra State. I also want to commend the Chief Judge and the Judiciary uh, for standing up. I understand this is the second, in terms of effectiveness or efficiency of the Judiciary, that ours is second only to Lagos in terms of the number of cases they try and judgments given every month. I want to commend you, uh, Judge, and uh, by, through you to the members of the Judiciary. We must also not end without thanking the members of the armed forces. The Army, the police, the Navy, the uh, DSS, the uh, Civil Defense, and they also are very able and I mean, uh, capable vigilante service. These people put their lives on the line so that we will be able to sleep. They have done quite so much, and I will continue um, to uh, appreciate you uh, going on. Now, I won't want to get into all of those. On infrastructure, that has been said that about the extraordinary delivery of our infrastructural uh, development. Because when we came, if you asked in their number on a needs assessment, what's your number one need? They will tell you is what? Roads. Number two, roads. Number three, roads. Before they come to the fourth one. And so we declared a state of emergency on roads. We faced a circumstance where complaints everywhere, this road, that road, the other one, and so on and so forth. But you know what? We decided that we're not going to play politics with this. Enough, because government all over lost credibility with the people because we kept lying to the people. We decided to do something different, and that is that why we prioritize this instead of coming to flag off a thousand roads when you have money to do only 10. And then erosion, fraud comes, and then erosion develops in most of them. Everybody says this road was awarded, this one was awarded, this one. Even if you take the entire budget of the state into one local government, you will not finish doing their roads. But we prioritize very strategic roads that have interstate and intra-local government linkages that have taken you to those neglected, to the food producing baskets, so that poor farmers can bring their goods to the market and so on and so forth, and then to regenerate our urban areas. But so far, we've flagged off over 400 kilometers of roads, about 247 asphalted, but at a quality that Anambra has not seen before. And when we talk about subsequent stabilization with uh, stone bays before the thick asphalt, whenever we moved around on roads, I remember one bishop, an Anglican bishop during the synod, was pleading with me publicly, please, um, I should make sure to give them, to give Anambra the Ngige uh, quality of roads. Onwa. Uh, because, because tomorrow has to be better than today, we are now intentional about improving on that Ngege's quality of roads and give Anambra better than Ngege quality. <laughs> eh? But there is something more to it. We are delivering this at the least cost. Completing and asphalting about 247 kilometers of road, ladies and gentlemen, that is record broken. It is not by accident that one of the major newspapers, I think they will be having the ceremony um, a few weeks to come, have declared us as the 2023 Governor of the Year in terms of infrastructural transformation. <laughs> At over 240 kilometers of road asphalted in 24 months, that comes to execution capacity of over 10 kilometers every month, every month that will have been in office. I can remember. We're not talking about the flyovers or the bridges and so on and so forth. And um, 
anywhere. The erosion projects that have been completed all over the place, the Benato Phase 1, um, coming to Phase 2, Nobi, Ezioko, um, Oka, behind the Kweme Square, and so on and so forth, even the federal highways. A zero pothole program is on course. And from late last year up until now, I understand they've measured it that about 392 kilometers of, uh, of road have been made motorable again just by repairing the dead traps on many of these roads, uh, so to speak. It's an initial thing. And in the by, we are set. If you go to where we're having the Anambra Government House Governor's Lodge, you'll come to realize we are determined that as in the Anambra, we're about the only state that I know, I don't know any other, that was created about 33 years ago, where the governor lives in a different town and the capital is in another town. Where you still haven't got a functional government office or governor's office. In the Anambra, within the next few months, we will break that if it's a cost. After 33 years, Anambra is about having a befitting government house and governor's lodge. Here in Oka, here in Oka, we are doing comprehensive modernization of the QMA Square. You won't, you won't recognize it again by the time you, I mean, end of, I mean, later part of this year. Reconstruction and upgrade of the Anambra State House of Assembly. Ongoing construction of the abandoned Oka shopping mall. 17 new commissioner, new buildings are going on for the commissioners. Uh, doing the Anambra uh, House in Lagos. Renovation of Ministry of Justice uh, outstations at the Newe Onesho, Torture, and so on. Um, then we are diversifying Anambra's energy mix. I'm glad, my Lord, you did mention about power. We are prioritizing power. In fact, when I came in, we set up the Anambra Power Committee. Now that it's, now the law has been amended to give, it used to be in the exclusive legislative list. Now it's now in the concurrent legislative list. And I can bet you we now have a multi-stakeholder team working day by day for us to crack the power puzzle for Anambra. Because, as you rightly said, we can't go where we want to go without having guaranteed power. But you know what? We have learned something from our brother, Professor Barton Naji. Professor Barton Naji, I mean, I salute his courage, particularly courage. It takes a very courageous fellow. It took him 20 years 20 years, and his company, Geometrics, to deliver the Aba Power project. We have learned from how he did it, and our team is working. No, it will not take that length of time. Anambra will within, I won't begin to tell you, I know how long power, many people have talked about power in the country promising, oh, within 10 months, it, uh, to build one, to start one power plant and complete it, you probably need at least three years. To so, start one and complete it, you need at least three years. Professor Barton Naji took him 20 to deliver uninterrupted power in Abia. What we can tell you is that it will take our number, I won't begin to tell you how many months or how many days and so on, because Anambra will see power when we are ready with it. But beyond this, beyond this, we have gone on to now convert about 26,199 solar light bulb, uh, lamps into solar. We are moving also to solar. About 1,000 new solar street lights solar in public offices, solar-powered water schemes, and so on. And so, we will be diversifying, which won't just be the normal gas-powered electricity, because today in Nigeria, because of the gas issue, you would have noticed all over the country today, power supply has come down all over the country, because essentially part of it 
is gas. Gas-powered uh, generation has been having problems in the country. We extended uh, electricity infrastructure to unserved and underserved areas, including places where we are heading to Nzam. We will get there. Uh, by the way, part of those places, jinx, that we are breaking, is that for the first time, the only local government in Nigeria that I know that you cannot drive to, the headquarters, the, the local government headquarters that you can drive to, happened to be Anambra West. And by next week, we will be ready to drive to Nzam for the first time in history. We're also taking electricity there. We are not yet there, but we are intentional about making sure that it's not only that they are accessible, but we can also get there uh, with electricity. And then the uh, Aglo Rio 2, namely Impunando, Ezi Aglo 2, and then Nubu 2, and so on. 33 KV line has been taken to Umona uh, from Aglo. And um, we are working on the um, regulatory policy framework to enable the private sector participation in the area of power. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, Sir Michael for of EEDC who entered an MOU with EEDC. Uh, he was supposed to be, I think, um, the issue about the flight uh, is not there. But we've put all the stakeholders in one room, and I want to believe we'll be making fundamental progress in time to come. Again, there is history in the making. Massive statewide pipe bomb water schemes ongoing. I've talked about that in a moment. Mobile will be going on the commissionings. Um, major urban water in Oka, Otua, Chane, Weo, Biziaguata, and Greater Onesha will soon be fully operational. And then test runs already ongoing in these places. We also have some other uh, ones in our, our, that will take up in Agolo, Okozo, Umunze, Obosi, and so on and so forth, and rehabilitating and converting about 75 rural water schemes to get on. Even in the 70s, in Onesha, forget, you fetch public tap for public water. But I'm sure those in their 20s and 30s don't know what it looks like. But I can bet you that that has been broken. Development and rehabilitated water schemes, uh, where our firefighting capability is being enhanced, an emergency response. At least we've gotten down to about 96% emergency uh, response capability, and that is going on. And let me also tell you, Kaina, <laughs> we're intentionally embarking on urban regeneration programs. Regeneration of furniture, because furniture literally died and our people are moving over across the river in search of greener and more habitable place. But I want to report to you on the Anambra. Somebody said it the day we went to commission Port Harcourt Road, Niger Street, that this man promised us Dubai, Taiwan. He came, Bidogodi, Bocha Gota. Bocha Sia Gota, Miliwe, Babakwana River, Niger. He was just describing it in his own understanding, the step by step that we are taking to recover our place. Because by two years ago, when it rained, the entire uh, Onisha South and much of Onisha got flooded. Water flood will get to people almost getting to drowning point. And in one secondary school, they confessed to us that two years earlier, three of their students died, were drowned after rain. But now we've opened that up, opened back Wangene, and opened the channel back again for the first time now in over a decade or so. Rain of water, flooding can now get back into the River Niger. And we are now intentionally rebuilding Onisha. Today, like I said, Ochanja Roundabout is no longer a refuse dump. It's now a water fountain. And that is the way we make the message. But while we are regenerating the existing ones, Onisha is the biggest industrial commercial city in the southeast. Onisha will be in the What are you There's nobody from southeast and so on that somebody from his kindred doesn't live in Onisha. Because if Onisha doesn't work, Anambra cannot work. 
If our nation doesn't work, Southeast economy cannot work. This is the largest market in West Africa. And so we are very, very intentional on getting this. Orca is gradually looking like a state capital. Orca is gradually looking like a state capital. Yes, and we are very intentional about it. One of the bridges that are being constructed beyond the Colombia or so on is the one that connects the two parts of Orca across the express. That is also ongoing now. And in Dubai, while we are regenerating the existing cities, we are intentional about acquiring land and putting them in land bank, planning them into the cities of the, twin, not just of the 21st century, but of the 22nd century. Anambra's landmass is the smallest after Lagos. If we don't plan today, Anambra will soon get fully built up as a chaotic ghetto. And so, we are planning three brand new cities. The designs already being completed. Oka 2.0 from Millennium City, going all the way through Ndukwenu to up to the Mamu Forest thing. You need to see the design. I'm sure now some of us will wish to reincarnate again. Now back, I gave you. Onisha 2.0, the other side of the, the second Niger Bridge. And then the industrial city that Christ, part of Aguata, Oboji, Gawato, uh, part of Orumba, North Orumba, South, there are now about over 4,000 hectares of land. Mahindra, the global consulting firm on industrialization and industrial policy, has completed the, the design and, and feasibility study for that. That will be the next new axis of prosperity in terms of industrialization. So, our housing infrastructural development on 214 hectares of land in Aguaba and so on and so forth. So, this new city is in the new industrial city. Revised feasibility study for Anambra Automotive Industrial Park. Completion of feasibility for the special agro processing zone. Feasibility for our pharmaceutical manufacturing zone. And feasibility for the export emporium. These are now set and we will be exploring alternative funding mix to kick them off for that Anambra of our dream. The groundbreaking for the industrial city will happen in no distant time. We've completed the Anambra in, uh, transport master plan and this transportation master plan includes the one on transportation. Yes, we now have the master plan for Anambra's rail system. That has now been completed, and we are going to come on board about it. We are discussing with possible financiers. We put together the financing, Mana and Magwakonu, for the rail to work. If again, something must give. Okonuma. Because there's this woman at Nobi, when I went on a campaign and I was talking about possibility of a flyover at um, Afo, Nobi. The woman, Kwaka, 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 said, Oma Kakwao, come here, me to go shop. So, what I'm saying to you, Ndia Nambra, the rail is nice. We are looking at all the options. One of the options that will go internally in the hinterland will require massive, over 5,000 buildings will have to give way. But this is the kind of conversation we are going to have as a people. This is the kind of conversation we must have as our people. But let me tell you, the other two parts of this, uh, this process is that we now have a master plan also for our water transportation system. And yes, the very critical one is for our road infrastructure. The best time to have, the, fir the be very first time, best time to have planned our transportation master plan was maybe 50 years ago. 
Now everywhere is being fully built up. Many, almost all the federal roads in Anambra need to be dualized if we are thinking about the next generations. If we are thinking 50, 100, 200 years, all the federal roads in Anambra and all the trunk A state roads in Anambra need to be dualized for people to be able to move on. Because in Dubai, let me share with you, by 2070, we estimate that you'll have about 38 million people here in this tiny piece of land called Anambra. People, it will be impossible for anybody to move around. Impossible. And this administration is determined. Yes, there is a saying that politicians worry about the next election, but statesmen worry about next generations. We are very intentional worrying about what happens the next 50 years, the next 100 years, the next 200 years. That's how other countries were built. That's how Dubai was built. That's how Taiwan was built. That's how America was built. They thought thousand years to come, how will it look like? And you start planning today. It's not when you get there, then you start talking. Today you find people trading on the street and so on and so forth. We need a master plan and we have now developed the master plan for rail, for land transportation and for water transportation. It's now changing gear to execution. And then, yes, Onisha Port is now been um, recognized as a port of destination and a port of origin. We are working with the concessionaire. And um, Ainabia, Anambra will regain its pride of place as the hub for logistics and for commerce. <laughs> Petrol powered vehicles to CNG and so on, upskilling in the Anambra in transport, hardware, and maintenance, innovations towards efficient traffic management. You can see that all over the state. Um, Atma, um, it's not comfortable for a lot of people, but we must do that. Um, people running one way and so on and so forth, they don't want this to happen. We must have a state of law and uh, order. And that is the only way, again, people can move around within the sustained little thing that we have. We are interventions and modernizing our markets. Yes, my lord, you mentioned coconut and palm revolution. Our target here is simple. Our target, we have already planted about 1,140,000. We've distributed the seedlings to about 130,000 households. Our target is to be distributing a minimum of 1 million seedlings every year. We are now started the procurement for this year's own. Another 1 million seedlings will be distributed this year. Our target is to be able to distribute between 5 million to 10 million over a period of time. You can imagine when they are all grown, Anambra will be green. It will help with the erosion control. And yes, any family that has about 10, 15 of those seedlings, nurtures them to maturity, a poor household in that will be permanently out of poverty. And we are looking forward to a new industrial ecosystem to process these commodities into whether exports or for local domestic consumption. There is a silent revolution going on in there. They call it the new Michael Obara's uh, regime. And then we are preserving the endangered Igbo cash crops, species such as Okwa, Oji, Aquinu, Bitacola, Popo, and so on. We have ordered for hundreds of thousands of these this year. We will also be distributing them. We must regenerate and get these things back on track again. We are distributing other endangered uh, species and so on and so forth. Now, supporting all year round rice production uh, going on at Ifito Gwari, train of agricultural extension officers where we trained about 150 that have now trained over 20,000 others. And what the yield that this is growing from about 7,000, uh, 7 tons to over 30 tons per hectare in some pilot cases. That's how we're going to be promoting agriculture. Anambra will change from just being a departure lounge to being a destination point. 
and we are intentional about this. Agolo. We had a mighty project we were going to kick off in Agolo, but we were delayed and distracted by issues of land and so on, which has now been recently resolved. But before that got resolved, because ours is an agenda with a deadline, we couldn't stay and wait. We've moved that and, and about 12 hectares of land here at the heart of the city. We're developing the Fun City. The Fun City that promises to be the largest three in one fun and entertainment city in West Africa where you have the water park, the amusement park, the country club, and so on and so forth, all in one location, the biggest of it in West Africa, and this will be completed this year. The neighborhood park, we are doing that, cultural renaissance on track, yes. We talked about education, we are coming to that in a second, but we cannot have smart schools, smart education without having smart teachers. And so, and that is our mantra is technology everywhere and everything technology. And we're very deliberate about creating, orchestrating what we call the digital tribe in Anambra. And so besides recruiting 5,000 teachers and another 3,000 being under recruitment process ongoing, exclusively through competitive process, we also want to enable them with the cutting edge technology and skills because you can't give what you don't have. If you are a teacher, you can't give what you don't have. But the quality of school resides in the quality of teachers and the quality of teaching. And so we are prioritizing teachers in schools and the quality of teachers and with the supervision to ensure quality teaching as well. And Ambra will continue to be the leader in this area. You cannot have a, a Taiwan of Africa without having solid education that is cutting edge. But that we are coming under to. Yes, on innovation, innovation and digital economy, the peer review by, I think, um, the National uh, Innovation and Digital Economy Council comprising all the states met, peer review, and they all rated Anambra as the overall best state in digital technology development. We came second runner up in tech in human capital, best state in digital infrastructure tech development, and first runner up in e-government implementation. This is the states themselves rating each other. And that number came up on that. I don't need to say much more about that. Initiated investment in fiber optic for the, my, for the last my connection. Solution Wi-Fi initiatives in some public spaces already coming and uh, citizen engagement. About 17 local governments are now being connected. The digital Anambra State Health Facilities Management Unit is now digitalized and our GIS, Geographic Information Management System. Soon, it will be able to have digitally enabled process of land administration that people should be able to obtain and change their certificates of occupancy. Our target is to be able to get that. Now it's about a week from months in the past, but our target is to be able to get it to a maximum of 72 hours, and that is ongoing as we speak. Anambra Silicon Valley, the digital tribe, level up Anambra, where about 20,000 of our youths have been trained in the basics of uh, ICT uh, techniques. And uh, SID currently, uh, Code Anambra is ongoing, and uh, about 2,000, uh, little over 2,000 uh, people are undergoing that training, free of charge. Costs millions for people to go through that kind of course in some other private enterprises, but we are partnering with some others and providing over 2,000 on their number our youths with this. And um, a temporary SID, the Solution Innovation District, is out there up and running, and every day hundreds of people are going there to learn digital skills. And guess what? We're also prioritizing to build our own what we'll promise to be Anambra's own Silicon Valley, where you have the current government house, 13 hectares of land from there down were devoting it 
to become the innovation district, the solution innovation district, and the its iconic first building is will be doing the groundbreaking next week or two. <laughs> Investing in our greatest asset, which is our human capital. Human capital is our greatest asset. We've mentioned this about education. We won't overlap that enough. Education, education, education. Our human capital is our greatest asset. And therefore, we are prioritizing health and education and leveling up with a digital school. Like you said, 5,000 teachers recruited, 3,000 being processed, and 2,000 laptops were distributed on Monday, and more to come. Um, and then, this getting the poor to have access to qualitative education is the only way to level up opportunities. The difference between the children of the rich and the children of the poor is opportunity. If you give the children of the poor the same opportunity as the children of the rich, I bet you the children of the poor might have the possibility of leveling up and overtaking the children of the rich. Much of the country, we have been creating dynasties of poverty. We are the children, for me, growing up. I attended the same primary school. The children of the rich and the poor attended the same primary school taught by the same teacher. Not anymore. Today, the children of the rich attend top-notch private elite schools. And the children of the poor, especially the poorest of the poor, are condemned in poorly resourced public schools. And therefore, where they get little or no learning outcomes, and they end up with nothing garbage in, garbage out, they end up themselves being poor with little opportunity in life. And their own children end up also being poor. So poverty becomes a dynasty in a particular house. And though the only way they escape from poverty is through criminality, we must end this, these dynasties of poverty by providing qualitative, accessible education to the poor in particular. Here, I thank, I want to appreciate the, the church, the Catholic, the Anglicans, the Pentecostals, the Salvation Army for investing in education. Keep up the good job in terms of what we are doing. We'll continue to support to the extent that we can. But we are very deliberate about that the system is as strong as the weakest link. The weakest link in our educational system today is public sector provided education system. So why we encourage and support the public sector education, I mean the mission schools, we also have to be deliberate about government schools because it is the primary job of government to provide this. And so we are working very hard on this and um, with our, quality, um, our free education thing and we are getting teachers to all these schools now. Enrollment has gone up about almost 19% now in public schools. And um, as we also, we are upscaling about 60 schools to become smart schools. Our public-private partnership is at work. Private individuals are also investing now in our school and hearkening to our call for them to invest in this. We have won several, we continue to win national and international recognitions. Our people, when their number continue to represent the country in national and international quiz and debating competitions and bringing home laurels. For the mission schools, it's important to underscore that I, I mean, uh, that there is a boom. That's what I have been told, the boom by government in terms of our support for mission schools. A few months ago, we doubled out about 1.524 billion as grant to return mission schools, and then another 700 million for mission tertiary institutions, bringing it about 2.22 billion um, to mission schools. But then we must also point out, oh, for the first time in history as well, uh, the schools owned by the Pentecostals received grant from the state. And point out that in the recruitment that we did for primary schools, 
80% of the teachers who recruited for primary schools went to mission schools, mission return schools. And we pay for all these teachers plus the old ones that we have, as we speak currently, even before the minimum wage and consequential adjustment, it cost the state about a billion a month to pay salaries of teachers that are in the mission schools, um, so to speak. We broke the jinx about UBEC counterpart funding that has now delivered some billions to um, ASOBEB and with which they are now implementing a massive um, uh, upgrading of primary schools. We've launched free antenatal and free delivery services that has just grown up. About 42,076 women have received or are receiving free antenatal here in Anambra. And every month, from an average of about 200 women that delivered in public hospitals in the past, we now have thousands of them, and 44% of these women who deliver free of charge, including free caesarean operations in Anambra, are not in the Anambra. Very important to underscore that. And I think I understand Onye Dizime, Ona Abadata Anambra, Koje Mwangwa Free. Kama Aisi Omuwai, Onye Na Amukwa Nya Walumwayo, Onye Na Amuno Agazu. Health access to neglected communities. We are building five general hospitals. And guess what? All these five general hospitals are in the communities that are large enough but don't have health facilities or in local governments that never had general hospitals. And all these five general hospitals are in the Anambra North Senatorial Zone. The governor comes from the south, the deputy is from central. But we are intentional about extending these services to the people where they are needed the most. Anambra West will get a general hospital. Enugu to Aguilera will get a general hospital. Then you come to um, uh, Anako in um, uh, Ayamelum. Then you, nobody will believe that Onisha South never had a general hospital. And of course, Opoko. We are building five brand new general hospitals and refurbishing. We have finished refurbishing three of them. We will be commissioning uh, in a few days uh, to come. And in the era of hospitals without medical personnel, we have employed over a thousand health professionals in our hospitals and so on. Uh, primary health centers, over 326 of them being renovated with solar equipment and so on, and the introduction of telemedicine that you connect them um, from a call center. Every, once you have access to a primary health center, you have access to a doctor through the call centers and so on and so forth. We are, you know, cervical center for screening for women, general hospital that we are refurbishing, and so on and so forth. I would just, emergency medical services, medical oxygen production plant and endoscopy at Onisha, enhanced disease surveillance, drug quality control. We distributed about 3.8 million mosquito nets, a few um, in 2022 when we came in. Healthcare infrastructure, sexually transmitted gender-based violence, and so on and so forth. Yes, one youth, two scale. Uh-oh. Ah. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a unique program that I think we are mainstreaming, and I think the rest of country, the rest of the country has something to learn from this. This is rooted in the Igbo apprenticeship uh, training and mentorship uh, scheme, where we we'll train them in two skills, basic trade skill, then entrepreneurship skill, and then we'll empower them with about two billion, and another 2.5 billion available for concessional loans to them. Um, and then reinventing and mainstreaming of our sports, um, sports economy all over um, Anambra now. Then, governance and value system. We are getting to the end of it. It's important to underscore this, that what underpins our agenda is this one people, one agenda philosophy in governance. Yes. We are one people, one state, one people, one agenda. We are prioritizing the fact that 
Yes, Anambra is predominantly, probably 99% uh, Christian um, state. But then you needed to bring everybody together. I am very happy as I look around here. This was supposed. To, this is a mass service, but I look around there and I see the bishops. Unfortunately, today coincides with the day that they are um, uh, ordaining. I mean, I think four bishops of the Anglican Communion. So all the Anglican bishops uh, are not uh, here. They had to excuse themselves. But it is fair to say that if I get on to the preaching of the, uh, the papacy on ecumenism, that we are one body with the Bible and the body of Christ, we are one. And we've tried to preach this all over and reflected it both in the character and the form of our administration. That somebody said to me that interdenominational tension that existed for over 20 years, that in one, a few months, you've been able to bring it to next to zero, as it were. And to the point that the CCC, the Anglican uh, Methodist and so on, uh, wing of Khan, had to give us a very special award as father of ecumenism. And the Pentecostal Fellowship agreed. And to give that to a Catholic like me, an Orthodox one at that, says volume about the way that we have tried to unify the state and bring down this tension down so that we can focus on the process of transformation of the state. Competence is a primary consideration. Confident competence is a primary consideration as we do recruitment and appointment in public service. Without regard to state of origin, ethnicity, religion, denomination, or political party. Recently, we just appointed the uh, permanent secretaries, two of them. One is from Abia and one is from Osho State. That's who we are. We preach merit at the national level and in our respective states, we should be able, they say, be the change that you want to see. In the state, in Anambra, we are providing that leadership by leaving out what we preach should be the model for Nigeria, where you have a merit-based appointment, merit-based recruitment, merit-based, that way Nigeria cannot move anywhere without having a merit-based system. And this is what we are mainstreaming here. My, some of my officers are not from Anambra State, uh, my appointees, my chief press secretary is from Edo, um, even uh, the head of the digital uh, thing is not from here, um, it's from Imo, and so on and so forth. So, this is the way we do it here, to mainstream the one people, one agenda. We are prioritizing infrastructural facilities to those who need it the most, not necessarily out of political patronage. And increasingly, a lot of Undia Nambra are embracing our public-private community partnership and investing. And throughout the Christmas and January, I was busy commissioning over 40 kilometers of road done by private individuals and so on and so forth. We are mainstreaming prudence, doing more with less. I've talked about that in the past. Civil servants, welfare enhancement thing. Even before the removal of subsidy, January last year, we implemented a 10% increase in salaries of all public servants in the state. There is ongoing negotiation of the minimum wage. Whatever the outcome of that, Anambra State will be on course to do its own bit. And of course, uh, to mitigate the, um, the shock of the system, I believe that Anambra State is one of the few states, one of the few states that implemented the wage augmentation program last year. We did it for four months, and I can bet you, we are not going to count states on our fingers that did the same. So we did that, despite the mega resources that we have. The digitization of budgeting and so on and so forth, I don't need to um, bore you with all of those, and our procurement revolution, mainstreaming of healthy living. Uh, 
when I say um, uh, healthy living, then I am. Um, uh, we're mentioning the Made in Anambra, Made in Nigeria strategy. You see me still my, with my Akwete. My Akwete at the beginning, my Akwete today, my show, either Anambra or Aba. Our car, innocent, remains that. Whatever it is, we'll continue to drive it because that is our own. That is our brand. Um, that is the only way to go. If we want to create sustainable wealth in Nigeria, we all must patronize made in Nigeria. That's the only way to create wealth. Local government system, local government system the way it was when we came, we needed to put it back in order. Put its finances in order because pensioners of the place, I think they were not paid uh, pension arrears of about uh, four years. We now need to begin to clear up this. There are a lot of things that hold them together. You need to streamline and clean up then for each of them to stand and become viable entities as well. We are strengthening their capacity to be able to, deli to deliver services such as waste management and other primary health care and education as well and so on and so forth. And we have reconstructed five local governments, completed renovations of some of them. I don't need to um, to bore you with all of those. And yes, we are now getting ready by dealing with the foundational issue. Because people say, uh, when are we doing a local government election? I am very much for that, for local government election. But we need to build, put the foundation for that. And the foundation for that is that we have now, what we had before as the Independent Electoral Commission law of Anambra for purposes of local governments was quite neither here nor there. We've now embarked on a comprehensive review of that particular law to bring it in tune with modern uh, practices and even consistent with part of what we have at the national level and so on. And the draft bill is now with the House of Assembly once it is passed, we will set up the Anambra State Independent Electoral Commission and put them the resources that will be required to organize local government elections. <laughs> Leaving no one behind, um, reaching the unreachable parts. Of course, you saw me go to Olumbanasa and so on and so forth. Uh, community tussles resolved in over 130 something communities. Radical changes in land administration, I mentioned that, and mortgage transactions rise in ease of doing business. Yes. The 2023 ranking in ease of doing business in Nigeria ranked Anambra number one among the 17 states in the southern Nigeria. And um, social protection policy consistent with our manifesto, we've, um, we've initiated one of the most ambitious social protection policy. Flood resilience plan, continuously working towards professionalizing revenue enforcement and so on and so forth, digitization, mainstreaming urban renewal. <coughs> I've, I think I've talked about this uh, severally. If the existing urban ones don't work, it will be difficult to get new ones started. Oboko. Yes, tomorrow we'll be there again. Oboko, I am determined to give these poor people a new beginning. We are determined to give them a new beginning. Oboko is the biggest urban slum in the southeast, if not in Nigeria, where you have more than half a million people in the most despicable urban squalor. Sewage, waste, no pipe bomb water, no hospital, no light, no roads. And by tomorrow, when we get there, like I said before, we'll be commissioning at least 12 kilometers tired roads, we'll be commissioning pipe bomb water that will be running, having street lights and the general hospital. Oboko will become, they say it will no longer called Oboko, it will now be New Heaven. A clean, green environment that we are working. Our environmental bill is before the House of Assembly. That will be, I mean, comprehensive 
to rescue the country, to rescue our place. Nine, I mean, the silting of drainages and waterways, sanitary inspection, tree planting, erosion mitigation measures, waste management, yes, waste recycling, and environmental conservation. That's quite a huge agenda that we are having there. And I want to say to you, that's quite a whole lot thing, but let me conclude by drawing your attention to say, if you are, we've been there for just, for 24 months, two years, two years. Agenda and what's been done is quite huge. Ongoing, well, like I said, very minuscule resources. A tiny percentage of what was available before. But we're determined. In this year, 2024 to 2026, we're changing gears. And it's going to be about execution, execution, execution. We're exploring a number of funding options to deploy the optimal financing mix to accelerate the path of transformation. The agenda is heavy, and among other things, we will be accelerating on the following. Deepening our security architecture. We will be deepening our issue on technology, innovation, and digital economy, on health, education, and human capital, making an umbrella destination point and development of solution for City Oka, and other entertainment and leisure uh, cities. We are coming back to Agolo. We have not given up on Agolo. That's a wonderful scenery that we'll have there, and we are coming down there. Cracking the power, electricity, is at the heart of everything. And, but like I said, it will not take us 20 years to get there. And we would, we would rather see the results rather than me talking about uh, what and giving um, timelines. Transportation infrastructure. Yes, within the next few weeks, we will be doing groundbreaking or flagging off the dualization of some major, major roads in Anambra albeit even federal highway. We will deliberately, deliberately want to link Newi to the capital. We we'll deliberately link the Ecolobia axis and so on to the capital. You know, the four major cities that were designed as, designated as urban, uh, urban towns by the Jingwobo administration in 1981 happened to be Oka or Nisha. Newi and the Ecolobia. And in the first phase, we must deliberately link these things, these cities together by having dual carriageways that can now, if you are coming from Newi to Oka, 15, 20 minutes, you should be there. If you are coming from Ecolobia, Axis or whatever, 15, 20 years. And we are starting off. We are starting off from Amorbia down to Ecolobia to Oga, um, boundary with Akokwa. And then we have the next one. And the next one is to link up from Wago Agolo. From Newi, you go all the way through Nobi, come on to, uh, through the Adazis. Uh, my Lord Bishop, what do you call it? Come on, I'm going to go to the Adazis. I'm going to go to the Adazis. Um, so, the, um, the power thing, the transportation, that's where very, and our public transportation system is going to be quite, um, um, quite heavy. Urban regeneration program and so on and so forth, um, we are, Is it our water schemes and so on? The agenda is quite long. This year, this for us is the non-election year since I assumed office. I don't know if you realize it. 2022, after swearing in a few months, 
two months later, primaries, then campaign, then general election in 2023, court cases, tribunal, appeal. It's only in 2024 that we haven't got any elections. And for us, every minute, even though we've focused literally every minute of our time, but even this year is going to be even much, much greater because we're going to intentionally be getting down to execution and commissioning. What you've seen, you've seen quite a few things, symbolic ones, we are coming. From now through next year, we will be commissioning and commencing, commissioning, commencing, inspecting, supervising, and getting it all done. For us, for the, um, uh, when I said to Ndebai, is that we all got to get it done together. We need the strategic partnerships. Partnerships of Ndea Nambranine, partnership of the diaspora community, partnership of the federal government, the captains of industry, partnership of the international community. We need all hands on deck to get it done. This land, Anambra, has all the potentials to be an international smart mega city. We have the, all that it takes. And for it to be so, we have already got an airport and probably a second one to come. But we also have the, the river port, which has also been designated as a port of origin and port of destination. And we're working with the concessionaires to make it happen and the federal government. And now when you put together all this that we are trying to do, we all need to work together. Whatever anybody can do, I told our morning people when I went to see them, either in Lagos or in Abuja, I said, sooner or later, if you ask me, what, how are you? I say, how, how many kilometers have you done? Because the entire resources available to the government of Anambra is less than 1% of the income of the Anambra. As I broke it down, if you bring it and share to everybody, each person will get 2,800 naira. Very minuscule. Unless we mobilize our people to action, we're not going to be able to go very far, the speed at which we want to go. Yes, we will be considering alternative financing modes. Like I said, if we need to borrow for specific project financing that will show how they pay back, we do that to accelerate those. Yes, a few days' time we will be having the groundbreaking of this 10-story hotel thing that will signal the birth of the new Oka. That is going to come. But this year is execution, execution, execution. We haven't got any time to waste. And I invite all of you, when I ask you to join us, let's do it together that the politicians are worrying about the election. The statesmen are worrying about the next generation. Let us join the statesmanly trend and worry about generations unborn. So that by next year, when we meet again, I want to say to you what you are seeing, what you have heard, and what you will be seeing in the next few months. I still say to you, Ndia Nambra, you, as the Americans will say, you haven't seen nothing yet. Thank you very much and God bless you. Tony and Mr. Solution! Solution is here. Solution, Adegon Anambra, Solution is here. He's here. And Ndi Anambra will enjoy. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, what more are you expecting from a man of this stature other than this? What a man, what a gift to Anambra, to Nigeria, and indeed the world. Professor Charles Chukuma Saludo CFR, Mr. Solution, what a man. In two years, Anambra has seen something that has not been seen before. 
Thank you. And may the Almighty God continue to bless and guide you. We want to welcome to this occasion His Excellency Dr. Alex Oti, the Governor of Abia State. Welcome. Welcome. He's like a brother to Mr. Governor. Great Ndibo. No.